This is Cody, and he died. Well, not exactly, but at least that used to be true. A few years ago, he left his body for four hours and went to hell. I know what you're thinking. Well, that's not true. He was never dead. He hallucinated, or he's making it up. But before jumping to any conclusions, take the time to hear his story because it is one of the most fascinating I've ever heard. So I'm just like in the house by myself. It's like, I'm just drink. So I just start drinking. Just a double shot of Everclear, bam. You know, do another one a couple minutes later, bam, start to feel pretty good. Do another one, do another one. But I'm thinking like five or six of those double shots to where all of a sudden I, I walked into my bedroom and the presence of, it was just, it was, it was the most obvious thing. Nobody had to tell me nothing. I walked into the presence of death and I knew, uh oh, oh there's something in here. It's, there's an entity in my room and I know exactly what he's here to do. So I just like, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I just say, I knew I was dying. I knew I wasn't living right. I knew where I was going. And I said it real fast, Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. And I think I'm on the word sin where I'm dropped. I'm just flying downwards through a tunnel. And this thing had my back that whatever that was in my bedroom that I never looked at ever, cause I never seen it. And I never looked behind me to see it either. But that thing had a hold of me like a rag doll and it was huge. There's no point in fighting it. So I'm just flying through hell. I know flying through a tunnel. I didn't have enough time to think about, oh, this is hell or nothing. I'm just, my eyes are just like full of what, the, looking around, you know what I mean? Like at this tunnel and there's people chained each side of the tunnel, the first section I go to and they're screaming and I'm downloading everybody's thoughts. Like if I flew by you at the speed of light, when I fly by you, I know everything about you. I know more about you than you know about you. Like that. And if there's a million people that I flew by right away at the speed of light, and I just flew by them, I would know everything about every one of them more than they know themselves without trying. So you get transported down this tunnel and did you land? Where did you arrive? What happened after? Because you got somewhere. The first thing is like they're yelling out they're like looking behind me, they're yelling out to the death angel guy. I'm gonna keep calling it death angel, right? That's what I think it is. And I don't really care to be perfect on it, but whatever, <laughs> the death angel, let's say. So they're, they're yelling, let me out, I'm a Christian. They're thinking I'm a Christian as he passes by them. You know what I mean? And so that was kind of a trip to see that. And then bam, we just stop. You know how like a UFO can be like, er, or whatever. Yeah. It was like that and it, it didn't do nothing to me. It didn't hurt me or nothing. And I'm just looking at this huge line of people and I'm reading their thoughts and stuff. It was, they're wearing all sorts of different type of clothing. You got people from Adam and Eve's day all the way up until 2020 or whatever, I, you know, whatever year it was when I went there. Um, different clothes, you got Americans, you got Asians, you got, you got full nine yards. But what's happening is this one dude that got my attention, this white boy, I went right into his trance and I'm looking down with his hands and his arms and he's a little boy. And as soon as I see what's going on, I freak out like, ah, like I don't want to see that. And so I immediately close my eyes and I want out and I get out. Like it was just like that, right? But the, the split second I was in there, I felt everything that he felt. And he was, it was a tournament. He was not enjoying himself. He was like, stop, he can't stop. He cannot stop like molesting this little boy, but it's not really happening, it's in his head. But it's totally real to him. It's just, there's no difference that he can tell. It's just like he's over and over and over for eternity, he's not gonna be able to stop. And he's not enjoying it like you did on earth at all. So hell is not the party that some people make it to be. Oh, there's no party, there's zero enjoyment. Nobody goes there and they think that that's even okay. The toughest Satan worshiper guy that goes there is just gonna cry like a little girl. The toughest one on the planet is gonna just fall and beg to get out and he ain't ever getting it out. And talking about never getting out, can you feel time pass? Was there a sense of time as we know it? Or Cause it's hard to wrap mm -hmm. our heads with what eternity is like or what it feels like. Yeah, um, I could totally tell about time. It says time flies when you're having fun. Uh, when I was in hell, time was slowed down, but I couldn't, I didn't know that when I was experiencing it, right? So anyways, the whole hell experience to me, I felt like four days. When I came back, it was like from noon to 4 p.m. So oh, okay. it was like four hours. Okay. So what happened after that? So there was the first episode with that one guy that you spot, then you started heading somewhere else. Yeah. Right. So then, then the death angel or whatever yanks me. He's pushing me towards this. It looks like a beautiful castle underground. It's like white, like pearly, like really beautiful castle. And as I'm going up to it, it's got like King Arthur's court type door, dude, like wood, right? And it had like, you know that, the, uh, 
I would say like that thing in the bull's nose, uh, yeah, that yeah. ring or whatever in the bull's nose. Mm -hmm. Had two of those for the doors. And as we're as he shoved me towards the door, they open themselves and it's really beautifully bright. And then when I come in past the brightness, I'm just looking down a long hallway and jail cells on each side. And I come to know just like all this information in the spirit, you'll, you'll just get this information to where you have no question about it. And it's really hard to explain to somebody who hasn't been in the, in the spirit world. How did you know that? Who told you that? You know, or whatever. And it's just like, bro, you don't get it. You, there's, you don't have any questions. Everything is solid information and you just get it. And you don't know how you're getting it, but you know it's not something to question. You just know it's a fact. And so I come to know that this is the section in, of hell where people, if you're like a false leader, false prophet, you've led many people to hell because you led them away from the salvation of Jesus Christ. Anything else, any other religion, if it's not Jesus is the way to heaven, then you're screwing them over. And this is the section for people who are screwing people over. If you had a big following and people came to hell because you said, hey, this is the way to God, or that's the way to God, you're, you got, this is your castle, you get, you get, you get what you asked for.